What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the thermistor. So I have here two thermistors, the one on the left is a 10K and the one on the right is 100K. And basically a thermistor is just kind of, it acts just like a resistor, right? So it resists the flow of electricity, if you guys haven't already watched my video on resistors. But the only difference is they respond to temperatures very differently. Um, they have large responses to temperatures and they respond in different ways depending on what type of a thermistor we're looking at. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. So I just want to kind of start by showing you guys uh, what these actual components look like. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And we're going to look at a few uses for some today and I'll show you guys the schematic symbol and whatnot. And we'll just kind of look at how these guys actually operate in a circuit and what they do. So to start, I want to show you guys the actual symbol, the schematic symbol for a thermistor. So it's very similar to the resistor. Um, it really is just a resistor with this little kind of line drawn through it. And I'm not sure where that uh, actual symbol came from. If someone knows, leave it in a comment down below because I don't know why it looks like that. But that's what it is. So it looks very similar to a resistor. And that's because oh, they really do behave just like a resistor. Um, so here is the international standard and the American standard. Um, so the IEEE and the IEC uh, standard uh, symbols for the actual thermistor. All right guys, so there are two main types of thermistors. So kind of ignore this down here for now. We're gonna look at that in a minute. But so there's two main types of thermistors. So there is a, a PTC or positive temperature coefficient and an NTC here. So this is a negative temperature coefficient. And I've just kind of drawn these very generic graphs. This is often not what an actual um, thermistor graph looks like. They're typically not very linear, but I drew this just to kind of give you guys the idea. Uh, thermistors come in all kinds of temperature uh, response curves. So they will, they're resistance. So here we have temperature plotted on the, on the x-axis and here's on the y-axis is resistance. So it's resistance versus temperature. And so this kind of shows the, how the resistance of these devices um, corresponds to a temperature. And so essentially, like I said, they're not, there's really no uh, one curve that defines uh, all uh, thermistors. Thermistors, pretty much every type of thermistor can have a different type of curve. It just depends on the actual thermistor you're buying, what it's made out of, and how, how they doped it and things like that. There's so many factors that come into play that affect how uh, a thermistor will respond to temperature. But typically, they'll give you this curve in a data sheet, or they'll give you some type of an equation that you can use to, to uh, see how this how a thermistor will uh, respond to temperature, and they oftentimes will give you a, a fixed point temperature. So they'll say at 25 degrees C, this is its nominal resistance, and then it will deviate from that nominal resistance based on some formula or based on some curve. And so if we look at it, uh, a, a PTC, as your temperature increases, it has a positive temperature coefficient, so it goes up, right? So it's, it's, its resistance will go up when the temperature gets higher, right? And then an NTC is the exact opposite. It starts out at a high resistance, so it has a high nominal resistance at say 25 degrees C, right? And so as the temperature goes up from there, the resistance will drop down. Uh, and again, it's not—it's typically not linear like this at all. But I'm just giving you guys kind of a kind of a picture here. And so we could, if you wanted just a very simple linear equation to model this, right? A PTC. Uh, would have a positive temperature coefficient, so its resistance R would be equal to some coefficient K times T, the temperature. And then uh, for an NTC, the resistance R would be equal to a negative coefficient, some negative coefficient times T, the temperature. And uh, like I said, oftentimes they're not really this simple. All right, guys, so I hope you can see this. So I have this 10K uh, thermistor hooked up here, and I just kind of want to show you guys its basic operation. Um, so these, these types of thermistors are often used to, they're used a lot, you'll see them on heat sinks in a lot of power appliances, so in power supplies or something that has a large uh, power conversion electronics in it, typically those heat sinks will have a, a PTC on it, um, and that is to kind of monitor the actual temperature of the, the, heat, sink, the heat sink junction, and they often use that to control fan speeds or to... Uh, set cutoffs where certain things will cut off or they limit the power output or whatever. So that's what these guys are often used for. So, and we'll take a look at some of those circuits here in a minute. We have here the actual resistance on the meter. I hope you guys can see that. Again, it's a 10K uh, nominal resistance. So that's typically, like I said, at 25 degrees Celsius is what they measure that at. And so 
if we, uh, if I put my soldering iron here on here, you'll see this is an NTC device. So when I put my iron on here, it, it's its resistance will start to drop dramatically as it as it heats up. So let's go ahead and put it on there, and you'll see that. I'm just going to touch it just for a second, and you can see it's already dropped like 2K. And if I hold it on there, it'll start to drop significantly, and drops rather fast. So this is real time here. So that's how fast it drops. There goes my 6,000 count, switching over. And so yeah, it's basically, it acts just like a resistor. It has a resistance in a circuit and it responds to temperature. So you can use this to monitor temperatures inside a device. And that's typically what these smaller ones are used for, but there's other uses for them. And we'll take a look at that in a second. All right guys, so one of the very obvious uses, which we kind of just looked at, but I'll show you guys this actual circuit uh, hooked up here in a second, is a, a temperature monitoring system. And so um, what we can do is we can set up a voltage divider network, right, with two resistors. And one of them will be the thermistor and it could be on heat sink or whatever we want to monitor, right? And we can kind of uh, bias this point, if you will, to some, to some uh, standard voltage, so at a nominal temperature. And then what this voltage divider network will do uh, basically is the V out will be corresponded to, if we have five volts in, so let's just say we have five volts in, right? Um, the V out of this resistor network will be uh, equivalent to R2 uh, over R1 plus R2 times the V in, or in our case, five volts, right? And so this could uh, go out to something like an Arduino analog uh, input or something like that and we can monitor this and we can actually pulse width modulate a fan output so we can control a fan speed with this or we could set a threshold limit in software where it will kick on a fan or it will power down the device or something like that and so this circuit you can see that there's quite a bit you can do with it so what you what we're doing here is creating a voltage divider network where you have some nominal voltage and as it, as it gets hotter this resistance here, R1, will decrease, and you can see the output voltage is inversely proportional to R1 there. So it will, the voltage here will start to increase as temperature goes up if we're using an NTC device here, and uh, our output voltage will start to to go up, and we can use that information to do whatever we want with it, really. All right, guys. So I have that exact circuit that I showed you on the board hooked up. Uh, the uh, R1 is obviously our um, thermistor here, and that was that 10K thermistor that I showed you guys earlier, the same exact one. And right here I have a 10K uh, resistor, just a little quarter watt. And so we have the exact uh, circuit I just showed you guys on the board hooked up. And we have 5 volts across uh, the whole thing, and then our, our middle point where the actual, the junction between the two resistors uh, is right here. So this is a, the output of our voltage divider network relative to ground. And so it's basically almost halfway, right? So if we're feeding 5 volts into this, we're getting out 2.238 uh, volts right now. So you can see that as I begin to touch it uh, to the soldering iron, that resistance will decrease and the voltage of our voltage divider network will begin to increase. So here we go. And starting to jump up pretty rapidly. Oh. And then again, this could be fed into something like an Arduino pin or something like that. And the, the Arduino can uh, analyze this pin with an analog read. And you could use this and so use software to define whatever you want to do with this voltage. You could, again, control a fan speed with pulse width modulation or cut out certain parts of your circuit, reduce power output levels or whatever. And that's typically what these guys are used for. and it will eventually slow down. You can see it's starting to, to slow down as we reach its maximum temperature limit. Oftentimes these um, these devices here do not have very wide temperature ranges, so they'll have some defined range, and then typically it's, you know, um, plus or minus maybe 50 C from that range. So if you go beyond that, it's not really going to function. Uh, it's gonna start to taper off, so it's, it's um, resistance won't uh, decrease as much. All right, guys, and one other use for these things I just want to show you, a common use for the thermistor is a PTC kind of as somewhat like a resettable fuse. It's not really a resettable fuse, but if we look at it, so if, if, if you have, a, say, an AC source or DC source, doesn't matter, right? 
and you have some type of a load, right, and you want to protect that, uh, you can use a fuse, which obviously will blow, and then you have to replace it or whatever, and that's kind of a pain. Um, there are resettable fuses, and then there's kind of these PTC deals here. And remember, a PTC uh, starts out at a very low resistance, so it's almost like under normal conditions, as long as there's not a, a, a large surge of current flowing through here, it'll act like a low resistance. So it'll be just kind of like a wire, right? It'll just run right through the PTC, and it'll operate your load. But if some type of a short or something happens here where an excess amount of current flows uh, through the PTC, um, again, we'll have a, a large... Uh, current flowing through here times the voltage difference across the PTC. That's the amount of power that will be dissipated in the PTC. That will heat up the PTC so the temperature will go up, right? And since it is a positive temperature coefficient, um, its resistance will start to increase and it'll basically start to reduce the amount of current that can flow through your load, kind of acting as a somewhat like a fuse, right? And it'll get so high that the amount of current will be reduced and then once it uh, cools off again, it'll basically reset and go back to, to the beginning. But So that is one use for these guys, is sort of as somewhat like a resettable fuse. And you see them used a lot uh, for that case. All right, guys. So one other thing uh, that these guys are used for. So they're used for a variety of things. Like I said, temperature monitoring. Uh, they're used for, um, they're really used for current limiting a lot. These are going to be a higher power um, thermistors, so not these little guys that we've been looking at here, but you'll see these often in power supplies and really often in amplifiers, and this is kind of like an amplifier circuit that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, oftentimes you'll see them in amplifiers, so what happens is you'll have your AC power coming in, right? And it doesn't really matter what it is, if it's a switch mode power supply or a linear power supply, it doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately you're always going to come to the same point, right? If it's a linear power supply, typically you'll go through a transformer and then at some point you'll hit a bridge rectifier and it'll go to a capacitor bank over here, right? And that'll smoothen out your DC and that'll run power your amplifier. If it's a switch mode supply, typically first thing you do is rectify it and then you go into your, your switching transformers and whatnot. But we're not really going to discuss that here. What I really want to discuss is current limiting with these guys. And like I said, it's often used in power supplies in a lot of um, a lot of uh, appliances that have large capacitor banks in them. Because here, if we have an AC source, let's just assume this is you know uh, mains AC, so 120 volts or 230 or whatever, depending on where you live, it's going to hit a bridge rectifier, right? And that bridge rectifier is going to output your your DC, right? And it's going to go straight to your capacitor bank. And if it just went straight to your capacitor bank depending on the size of your capacitor bank, but if you're dealing with guys like this, really large capacitors, and you have several of these, uh, you could potentially, it's, well, first off, it's not good for the capacitors, it's not good for any of these components, it's really going to put a lot of stress on your diodes, your diodes will eventually blow, um, even traces and PCBs and things like that can't handle this, you'll often fry traces and PCBs or whatever, it's going to draw a lot of current, and you can blow circuit breakers, there's a lot of things that can happen, it's, it's not good, so you want to you want to design around that, you don't want that large inrush current is what we would call this, right, because it's just going to, as soon as you fire the circuit on, it's just going to charge up those capacitors as fast as they can. So these capacitors are almost going to be like a zero resistance. It's almost going to be like a short circuit when you first turn this thing on because these capacitors are just going to want to charge up and they're going to have a very large current draw. So the NTC or the negative temperature coefficient thermistor will be placed in series. And if you guys remember, if we looked at that, that graph over here, I'll show you guys that one more time real quick. That graph right over there, you can see it starts out with a kind of a lower temperature, right? Or we would just say a nominal temperature, say 25 degrees C or whatever. It's just going to be at a lower temperature. And what's going to happen is it's going to be at a higher resistance. And even though uh, it starts out at a kind of a high resistance, like I showed you on that graph, uh, typically the these big power guys right here, something that's used for inrush current limiting, it's high resistance isn't that high. It'll be something on the order of maybe 10 ohms or 5 ohms or something like that. But it's high enough. It's, it's not too high, but it's high enough to where uh, the amount of current that's flowing through here isn't just, you know, ridiculous. Uh, because if there was no resistance in series with this, it basically just pushed as much current through as it could. And what basically happens is... Even though this thing starts out at kind of a high resistance, right? What's going to happen is, if you by Ohm's law, right? If you if you have the the voltage difference across this this let's just call it a, a resistor, right? It really is acting like a resistor. 
if you have the voltage difference across this resistance and the amount of current is flowing through here and you multiply those two, that's going to tell you the amount of power dissipated in this guy. And it's going to start to dissipate a lot of power, which is going to let out as heat, right? It's going to be thermal energy. And that is going to actually increase the temperature. And as that temperature uh, increases, its resistance will go down even more. So it begins to become a better conductor. But by that point, by the time it actually starts to conduct a little bit better, this capacitor bank's already almost charged up. So it's not really seen as like a zero ohm load anymore, right? So these capacitors are almost charged up. And I, I forgot to finish this circuit, right? So this is what happens as soon as you power on the amplifier. It puts all the uh, surge current through this, this NTC, which reduces the current. It charges up your capacitor bank over the course of maybe a couple to three to four seconds or whatever. It's not that long, but it's long enough to charge up that capacitor bank instead of charging it in you know, a quarter of a second or whatever and just drawing ridiculous amounts of current. And then what happens is you'll notice when you turn on a lot of amplifiers, you'll hear, it, it, first off, the amplifier doesn't function for the first couple seconds, and then you'll hear a relay click in a few uh, seconds later, say, like I said, three or four seconds or whatever, right? And that's just some relay bypassing the NTC, because at this point, the capacitor bank is fully charged, and we don't want to have all of our current running through this all the time, because it's going to get hot, and it's going to reduce our current flow by a little bit, and it's not really efficient, so we're just going to bypass it and put a, a relay in there. And that's how a lot of... Um, current inrush currenting inrush current limiting circuits work uh, especially in like amplifiers and power supplies and things like that so that's a, a really good use of uh, the thermistor all right guys so that pretty much wraps it up for this one if you guys are actually curious as to how these devices really work like inside physically um, I'm not gonna lie that's a little bit above my knowledge so you have to look that up, but I tried looking at it and it gets very thermodynamic -y really fast and it goes way beyond my knowledge. But I will say, I'll give you guys kind of the gist of it. So the NTCs, um, basically what they do is they have a semiconductor material inside, usually some type of a metal oxide or whatever, a semiconductor, right? And so what happens is if you guys are familiar with semiconductors, I made a video on semiconductors, but they behave very weird, right? And so a semiconductor typically doesn't conduct very well, right? So it's going to have a high resistance. So that's kind of what an NTC does, right? When it starts out, it has a high resistance. And when they heat up, their actual charge carriers, be it electrons or holes or whatever, um, start to become a little bit more mobile because there's a lot more thermal energy in the semiconductor when it heats up, right? So because their charge carriers become more mobile, they uh, actually gain energy and they can be pushed into the conductance band and the resistance of that semiconductor will actually drop. And that's kind of the idea of the NTC. And so the PTCs, the positive temperature coefficients, they use some type of a ceramic material. I'm not very familiar with how they work, but if you guys know a little bit about like how uh, components behave under temperature, you'll know that standard resistors and things like that when they get hotter, their resistance actually increases, and I explained that in my resistance video as to why that is, but it has to do with the actual uh, charge carriers and um, atoms and stuff colliding with each other, and it slows it down, that's why the resistance increases. And so in the ceramic materials, uh, they actually behave just like a normal resistor, but a lot, um, a lot more exaggerated. So just a little bit of a temperature increase will really dramatically increase the resistance of the PTC. So it's kind of just a basic, very generalized explanation as to how they work. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely subscribe for more videos like this. I'm gonna be putting out a lot more electronic component videos. And that's pretty much it for this one. As always guys, have a good one.